What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and today I've got my experience of the Microsoft Surface Go. So when this product first came out, there was obviously some mixed impressions of it, but I think overall, people were really excited to see Microsoft launch something that kind of fits in that budget price point, but still has that premium build quality that the Microsoft line is very well known for, runs a full version of Windows if you want it to, and I think most of all is very portable and is almost fun to use. I think this is definitely something that a lot of people are gonna be considering as a back to school computer. So if you wanna check out my other back to school content, I'm gonna leave a link to them all down down below, but I think beyond students, I've seen the medical field start using Surface computers a lot, and as for an admin computer or something that can be easy to take around the office and stuff, I think this is going to be very popular. Because I was very recently a student though, I'm going to try to gear the video towards that, and I think it definitely has the two major things that students are looking for. It does come in at a price point that is considered cheap, at least compared to a full-on computer or Surface Pro or a MacBook, and it is also very light and easy to take around, so if you want to use it in your dorm as a multimedia machine, or take it to class to take some notes and web browsing, emails for example, then it is just so handy to have. I also think the price point makes it a very good Chromebook alternative, but you do have to keep in mind that the keyboard is sold separately and the Alcantara one here is $130. And if you wanna use a Surface Pen, that is also gonna cost you extra money. I will say though, even though the keyboard is not exactly something that you might wanna pay for right off the bat, it definitely does complete the full experience of the Surface Go. Speaking about price point, this one starts at $399 in the US and that model comes with four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of EMCC storage. Whereas the model that I believe more people are going to want to spend on is the eight gig of RAM with 128 gigs of SSD. The EMCC storage on the base model is a little bit slower than the SSD and both of them do have the Intel Pentium Gold processor. On paper, obviously it isn't anything crazy, especially the processor, but I will say the performance was actually surprisingly better than I expected. As for the build quality, I think that is one of the things that really drew me to want to use the Surface Go right when it came out of the box because it does have that magnesium finish that you see on the Microsoft Surface Book, the Surface Pro, and also the Surface Laptop. And I really like that Microsoft didn't cheap out on the build quality. The buttons are all very nice and tactile. The kickstand is sturdy. And on the outside, it is pretty much like a little brother to the Microsoft Surface Pro in every way. As reports, you're gonna find a USB Type-C, a headphone jack, as well as Surface Connect for charging, even though you can charge it with USB Type-C pretty fast, as well as a micro SD card reader. But one thing that it is missing that even though in 2018 you kind of can debate whether or not it's useful, is a USB 3.0 port in case you might have a USB thumb drive or something like that. Even though I have had the MacBook Pro for a few years now and I'm starting to get used to the USB Type-C annoyances that I initially had, schools often still have older computers and if you're gonna be transferring files from like a school computer that is from 2009 because the school doesn't wanna invest in new ones, then having USB 3.0 is still kind of a good thing to have. The display on this guy is a 10.2 inch pixel sense display with an 1800 by 1200 resolution. It's also 10 point multi-touch and overall the display quality is decent but nothing that's going to really blow you away. The colors are pretty accurate but it also isn't the brightest screen out there but for everyday use and really what it's made for I think it's a good size and gets a job done. The bezels around the edge make it feel like a smaller display than it actually is but I think it's a very good size and something that you can really just take around without a case or a backpack. As for performance, as I mentioned initially, the starter model has four gigs of RAM as well as 64 gigs of storage, and both of them have the Intel Pentium Gold processor. The one I have here is the upgraded model with eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of SSD. And I think going into the purchase of a Microsoft Surface Go, it is going to be a productivity minded approach. Don't expect to install like Premiere Pro and start doing any video editing on this guy. Don't expect to do your entire portfolio of Lightroom for large photo shoots. But for my testing for general photo editing, occasionally on Photoshop or Lightroom, the Surface Go was able to handle it pretty well. The Surface Pen also does complement it pretty nicely, but as a general productivity machine when it comes to emails and basic tasks that are for the everyday basis or on the go, I think the Pentium Gold does handle things much better than you might expect it to. Even though light games should be able to handle just fine on this computer, you shouldn't really go into this purchase expecting to game on an everyday machine. I think when it comes to the performance standpoint, a lot of people are gonna be trying to compare this to the iPad, for example, that might come around the same price point after you add the keyboard. And my answer to that is that it is kind of a different experience. You do have the option to use the full version of Windows 10, and in a lot of ways that does allow it to be a more productive machine. But if you compare it to the iPad, for example, Apple simply has the largest market of tablet optimized apps, which are very well supported and work amazing amazingly when it comes to performance and optimization on the tablet. So even though there are a lot of similarities when it comes to the form factor and just the way they look, I do feel like my experience on the Microsoft Surface Go was more of a desktop experience as opposed to a mobile tablet experience. 
But now onto battery life, and Microsoft's claim of this computer is nine hours. From my testing, I was able to get anywhere from maybe five to seven hours, depending on what I was doing. But when it comes to playback, you should expect closer to maybe the seven, seven and a half hour mark. But for general tasks, if you want to add in like photo editing and stuff like that, then you should expect closer to maybe five, six. I do like the fact that you can charge it via USB type C though, because that just makes it so much easier when you have a battery pack that you're carrying around anyways. Of course, another reason why you might want a Microsoft Surface Go is for multimedia. Being able to disconnect it from the keyboard stand and just use it with the touch screen it just makes it easy to rest on your bed and carry around if you just want to watch some movies and TV shows. There's actually a set of stereo front facing speakers which sound pretty good and that is always nice to see. So overall, what is my opinion on the Microsoft Surface Go? And I will say the biggest selling point for me was the fact that the build quality is just so nice and solid. After coming from a MacBook, for example, everything that I want to use now on an everyday basis just has to be built well. I want it to look good on the outside, but also not have any loose hinges or feel like it's gonna break very easily because you simply just wanna fold it up, put it in your bag or carry it around with you during the day. In addition to that, it's also nice to see that it's very versatile and the performance for what you're paying for is enough to handle tasks that you might want it to. Nothing too intensive, but also not slow or bogged down to the point where you feel like you can't trust the device. Even though it would have been nice to have seen them offer something that has maybe an i5 processor at a higher price point, but in this form factor, the Surface Pro is obviously going to be your next step up when it comes to wanting a larger display and a more full laptop experience. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and leave a comment down below and I'll see you all in the next one.